What's going on, everybody? Today, we'll be going over displacement mats and showing you guys how to add depth and texture to your surfaces. So first thing we want to do is we want to start off by creating our own custom material. So we'll go over to Quixel Mixer. You'll start off by signing into your uh, Epics account. We'll start off with a new mix. I keep 4K resolution. And this is a really quick and simple process. What we're going to do is you're going to go into your library because you've signed in, right? So your surfaces that you've already used, you'll have access to them here in Quixel Mixer because they're integrated. I want to find something nice and rocky so we can I can really show you guys how the displacement works. So I've, I've selected this rock surface and give it a second to load. Um, and then you'll we'll, I'll, I'll be able to show you guys how this works and walk you through the stages and steps. All right, so here it is. Our material has downloaded and you can see that it's already displaced. You already have an idea what this material will look like once you displace it. So the beauty of the Quixel Mixer is you're able to combine different materials to create your own custom material that you'll use to populate your scene with. You can use this on walls. You can use this method for like walls ground surfaces and I'm even certain of like steps and then like centrifugal circular objects as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find a second uh, material to use on the next layer to combine and create this material that we want to make. Uh, let's go with something white. <clears throat> Give it a second to download and boom. You see how we can actually turn this into a snow surface if we would like. Um, utilizing the sliders, you'll click on your layers, you'll access whichever layer you want, and then you can manipulate these layers to blend. This is your blend radius, which will allow the two layers to blend how much you want them to interact with each other. Now this, this slider right here causes both layers to warp and kind of like mesh inside of, you know, and give you more detail. You can play with this however you see fit based on whatever material you're making. That's the beauty of Quixel Mixer. You have full control over the appearance of your materials. Here it is, our smart materials. These smart materials come with Quixel Mixer and we're gonna use one of these just to create a third layer, just to give our, our material just a different dynamic and make it just that much more personalized and custom. Let me see, what do we have here? I already got a, let's let, I, I like this. Give us some brown, I mean some orange to bring something into our scene. Downloading, there we go. So now that kind of like, it resembles maybe like some painted, painted bricks. You know, you could use this for a wall texture even. But now what I've done was that little water drop icon at the top adds liquid, creates puddles. And then you hit the albedo, um, the little albedo icon to manipulate the color of these puddles that you're creating. So that's what we're doing here. Now inside of the surface, we have threshold, which is going to determine how much of the surface is affected by the wet. By, by the wetness or, or the, how much of that puddle is gonna be exposed. Um, this is your surface slider. So that's gonna determine if you want the water to look shallow or deep, the depth is the same. Um, moisture, this threshold determines how much of the surface you want to look wet. Your radius is the radius of that threshold. I don't really tinker with the blur cause I don't even know <laughs> what it does. So with that being said, here we have our custom material created. So now that we're done, we're just going to click export. <clears throat> we don't need the metalness or maybe you do depending on what you're using. But since I'm just doing the surface, we're going to just use our basic base color, albedo, roughness, normal, our diffuse and our diffused map, and then our, uh, our AO or ambient occlusion. Next, we'll just find or decide where you want it to go and then click export to disk. You'll save it. Make sure you name your file so you can come back and use it later if you want to make any changes or adjustments. 
or additions or subtractions, whatever, you can always get back to it. So we'll save this and then exit out of Quixel Mixer and then jump back inside of Unreal Engine. Now that we're back in UE, we're gonna have to create this material that we just made in Quixel Mixer. So first thing is we're gonna open up our content drawer, go to where we dropped in or where we downloaded our uh, textures. Where do I have them? In documents, yeah, right here. So we're gonna click on these and you're gonna go to where they're located and you're gonna drag all of these textures, just highlight them, grab them and drag them down into your uh, content drawer and they'll import. Now we can close that. Let's get back into our content drawer. Me personally, I like to organize. So I'm gonna right click, create a new folder, name this white rock or whatever your, you know, whatever your name and your material, highlight all of these and then drop them, move them over into my folder for organizational purposes because things can get messy and then it's just better later. So you know where all your assets are. So we'll start off by going to our base color, right click, create a material, you'll name it, and then double click on it to open it up. So now what we're doing is we're gonna create this material like any other material. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna add in a dynamic landscape weather effects node since we utilize ultra dynamic sky and weather. And this is a basic setup. It's like, instead of running your base color, your roughness and your normal into your output, your final output node, you're gonna run those into the dynamic landscape weather effects node first. Ambient occlusion itself will go directly into your final output node, but everything else will go into your landscape weather node. Now, you also know that we got a displacement map, and I know you guys are probably wondering what happens with that, but just sit tight. Um, that comes next. So we'll just connect all of, our conne all of our connections, and we'll hold the number one left click to create a constant, and then we'll connect all of our masks from the landscape uh, from the landscape weather effects into this constant and then just a simple run your base your roughness and your normal into your output node and that's it it's so simple now you when you create your material it'll also interact with the weather so we'll just click apply and then let's go back out we need to go into modeling mode so and then once we're in modeling mode you're going to click on this rectangle right here and then you're just going to drop it, click accept, and then raise it up off the ground some. Now, this rectangle is going to be our material. So what we need to do is give it the material. So we'll just go here, that white, white rock material that we just made, right click, create a material instance, grab that, drop it on the uh, rectangle, and boom, here you go. This is the material we made in Quixel Mixer. However, it is not displaced. It does not look the way it looked in Quixel Mixer but we're about to get to that part now. Remember that map I told you about, the displacement map? This is when this is gonna come into play. So first thing we need to do to start the displacement of this map is we need to go over here and go down to remesh and then click accept. Next step is hit displace. And as you can see, it's raised up. However, it's not the right map. So what we need to do is go back in and remember I told you about that displacement map. We're gonna grab that and we're gonna pull it right into this into this slot. And as you can see, now we have displacement. Make sure your displacement type is texture 2D matte. And now you can play with the intensity of your displacement so that your surface and your ground looks the way you want it to look. Click accept. There's another step that I didn't show in this tutorial. After you do this, you can click on simplify, hit accept, and then go into the uh, content drawer of your, of your surface, right click it, and enable nanite yes this can be is nanite enabled and i mean that's pretty much just the gist of creating these landscapes i'm sorry for not showing you those steps but it's simple i, I promise you so really quick let me just show you how the dynamic weather affects our surface now since we've turned on uh since we've added that landscape dynamic weather node Let's drop some snow on here. So what I'm noticing is the snow and the weather is not interacting with our material. Do not worry about it. It is not a big deal. If this happens to you, do not go crazy. 
all you have to do is go into a search bar, type in dynamic and enable dynamic landscape weather and boom. Now you see the snow is interacting with the material. The displaced areas that are raised up, they do not have snow on their sides. It's just on the top of the surfaces. This is the beauty of that uh, dynamic landscape weather node and then being able to make your own materials because they're already gonna be ready to go for any, any environment that you create in any weather scenario that you place in your environment. So this is beautiful. And that's pretty much it. This is the gist of how to displace your textures and create the ability for them to interact with weather from ultra dynamic sky. If you don't have it as a plugin that you can get in the marketplace, this is not sponsored. I'm not being paid to say any of this. Nothing is given to me free. This is just a tool that I love to use and I think people should know about. It. It's just as simple as that. You know? So again, I hope you guys learned something today and your next uh, environment or your next build just has a new level of detail. Tag me if you create anything based off of something you learned from me. I would like to see what you guys are doing and uh, I can learn something from you as well. Thank you. Stay creative, guys.